Hello everyone, my name is Reza and welcome to another Unreal Engine tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to use the sequencer tool to make movies inside Unreal Engine 5. The good news is Unreal Engine has got a very robust cinematic tool to produce animated and cinematic sequences. You can pilot cameras to create level fly-throughs, animate lights, move objects, animate characters, render output sequences, and so much more. Guess what? That's exactly what we're going to focus on in this tutorial. It's been suggested by many of you in the past couple of months. So without any further ado, let's get started. Alright, let's talk about the scene that I'm going to use in this tutorial. Uh, this scene is available inside Epic Games. Uh, you can just simply navigate, search for ICVFX production test in the search box, have access to the scene and download it so you can follow along. It's a great scene by the way and uh, works really well with what we have for this session. Now, to create cinematics and animation inside Unreal, we need to start with a level sequencer. Now, level sequencer in Unreal Engine is a tool that allows us to directly animate characters, cameras, properties, even actors over time. First question, how can we create a level sequencer? We have two ways of doing this. One is through content drawer so with the content selected i'm just going to right click create a folder and call this cinematics i'm just going to double click in there to create my level sequence i'm going to right click go into cinematics and level sequence so that's one way of creating that non-linear editing environment the second way, which is a kind of easier way, is to click on this button and this little arrow, left click, add level sequence. No matter what way you go, you still need to name it and save the asset. So I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to go into cinematics and that's why I created this folder. I'm going to call this CIVFX underscore level sequence and I'm going to save. There we have our level sequence window. With the help of this level sequence window, we can create camera animation. We can apply animation to our characters. We can animate lights in the scene and we can enable particles. At this point, I'm just going to focus on camera animation but there will be feature videos on this channel to talk about other ways of using level sequence inside Unreal Engine 5. Now, first things first, how to create a camera. Now, normal cameras inside Unreal are called Cine Camera Actors. And we have, just like any other functions inside Unreal Engine, we have multiple ways of creating the same node. Let's see how we can find and create Cine Camera Actor. First one is to go into Add, and then we go to Cinematic, and we have Cine Camera Actor. Next method, which is my favorite, is to simply click on this little camera icon and that creates a new cine camera actor for us. Let's see what's going to happen if I just click on it. A couple of things just happened. First things first, we're actually in the camera viewport. You can see it says pilot active cine camera actor. The second thing that happened that we have cine camera actor enabled and it's under camera cuts. And that camera cuts, it's like a big container and that holds all the cameras that we have in this particular scene. Well, that's cool. Let's have a look at the second way of creating this. So I'm just going to delete these guys. 
I'm just going to go and create cinematic, cine camera actor, click on it, and there we have our camera. But this method, you may have noticed that we don't have anything in here, which can be quite surprising. We have a tiny viewport of the camera in here. So the camera is not set to pilot. As a matter of fact, I can just select the camera and press F and sort of rotate around it. There we have the camera. And this icon right here is our level sequence. So I can just select the level sequence, move it aside. So we have the camera and we have the viewport. And there is no camera cuts because every time you just put an asset into the viewport, you have to attach that to your camera cuts. With the camera selected, I'm going to go to track, actor to sequence. And because I've already selected the camera, Unreal Engine is smart enough to know that, all right, probably I want to connect this item to my level sequence. If I click, the same thing happens. The big container camera cuts will get produced. And then underneath that, we have our Cine Camera Actor number two. And again, it's set to Paladin. So you can see, same thing. We, we deal with the exact same output at the end, just slightly different ways of creating things. So you either click on this, or you go into Cinematic, Cine Actor Camera, and then you have to connect that to your sequencer. All right. Now, the next thing is, how can we jump out of the pilot mode? Because right now it's set to pilot. This is actually, we're looking through our camera. How we can jump out, very simple. First way of doing this is just by to click on this little icon there. And all of a sudden, we stop piloting right now. So if I zoom back, there we have our Cine camera. Now, if I want to jump back to pilot again, I can either click on this little lock cine camera icon to jump back into the piloting, or I can, if I just zoom back and rotate, I can actually right click and say pilot cine camera actor two. So two easy ways of doing this. I'm just going to jump out. One is to click on this lock and the second one is to actually right clicking and go pilot camera actor. Now, believe it or not, there is a third method and that method is my favorite. And that is control shift P for pilot. Now, if I just select the camera control shift P, now I'm piloting control shift P again, toggle back piloting and stop piloting. So you can see the shortcut is actually the easiest one to use. And if I go in here again with the camera selected, right click on it, you can see control shift P is there as our shortcut. And so that's how you actually look through your camera or jump out of your camera to be in the working environment. Now, another thing and actually common question that I get from students is every time you select a, your camera. So let's say I'm just going to go in here and select my camera. I get this viewport. Now it's a sort of a, a double edged sword where some artists actually do need that window. Some artists actually don't need this window when they are in the working area. They just don't want to have any clutter and they want to make it smaller or some point they may want to have it actually bigger. But you can see there is no way to resize this window. That's another sort of a hidden attribute that I would like to show you to how to resize this. And that attribute is not actually in the viewport. It's in the settings. So you can go to edit and then editor preferences. I'm just going to bring the windows here uh, inside level editor. We have viewports. If I click on it and under look and feel, look what we have camera preview size. So if I somehow bring this little guy over here so you can sort of see both of them, I can just click here and go six. 
seven and hopefully you can see how this viewport gets bigger or i can do the opposite i can go in there and just put in four i notice that any value below four makes this viewport really really small for example if you go three it is really tiny and i barely can see anything so it kind of defeats the purpose um, but again that's something that you actually can do you can see it's more like an icon now as opposed to a viewport the default value is five you can of course at any point of time set as default um, or you restore to default if you feel like you're not quite sure you want to set back everything back to default or if you wish to continue with your preferred uh, viewport size that's how you do it all right i'm just going to close the edit preferences window and let's have a look at the camera attributes itself i mean if i uh, select the camera and look at the right hand side in the details window you can see a lot is going on here actually now i'm going to sort of scroll down we can see we have film back as our first rollout and that is pretty much uh, the preset for our camera bodies so you can uh, specify a sensor width and height properties in order to sort of emulate the selected camera body and based on that um, cameras the field of view will change the aspect ratio will change we've got some presets for example you can go to super 8 millimeter and you can see how aspect ratio is now changing um, you can go six to nine film you can go to whatever you have for example imax 70 millimeter and all of a sudden your aspect ratio will change to that so basically it changes the sensor width and height and sensor aspect ratio that's that lens settings is probably uh, one of the useful ones that you use all the time and that gives you a, a list of real world preset camera lenses to choose from so if i go in here we actually have accurate a camera lens prime lens uh, which will affect the focal length will affect the f-stop because you can see f-stop 1.8 for example where the aperture gets really wide um, these are very expensive lenses in, in real life f1.4 uh, 30 millimeter it's actually that's what i have at home with my r6 camera so you can see these are actually accurate lenses so i can sort of select that and all of a sudden i get 30 millimeter prime lens uh, 1.4 aperture i can go and do tele uh, 105 or 100 millimeter prime f stop 2 point or 2.4 uh, or 2 so uh, this is really cool you have access to um, camera lenses and that really increases the accuracy of what you're doing uh, for now i'm just going to set it to a very popular 85 millimeter prime um, f1.8 uh, there is one 1 1.2 which is about four or five thousand dollars so 1.8 eh, i'm not too crazy about it but we'll get the job done then we have focus setting so if i collapse that we have focus setting here and that focus setting is pretty cool let me just uh, get into the piloting so i'm just going to go in there Control shift p to pilot and if i just uh, move the camera you can see if i just for example go in here let me just do that you can see i can play around with depth of field so the cool thing about that is um, it actually controls the depth of field and your focus settings and uh, you have few options the first one is do not override which basically disables uh, the depth of field altogether so everything is in focus and then we have manual which is quite useful i can just play around with the depth of field and you can see how accurately I can just specify the range so near ground is out of focus right now and then I can lower this and now near ground is in focus so uh, at any point of time uh, there are, uh, there's a lot you can do for example if I go in here again I can change 
and you can also sample it with this eyedropper uh, click on specific items and bring it in focus but it's um it's really easy to just uh, play around with this attribute and just get this done there is a, a visual way of doing this as well using um, this debug focus plane where you can actually see how much of it is in focus you can see this color tells you that this portion is in focus and the remaining of it is out of focus so you can kind of see that visually how this works again if you have problems with that you can just use this eyedropper click on certain objects and sort of sample it I can just move around go into another area um, just bring the camera ever so slightly closer so we have sort of a near ground middle ground and background um, now it's actually quite easy to see how this plane visually speaks to us so you can see only uh, this portion is in focus which is quite useful uh, so make sure to sort of enable the camera oriented transparent plane in here to be able to see what is in focus what's not in focus or alternatively use this eyedropper uh, we've got crop settings and as the name suggests it controls the crop settings here you can actually crop your um, screen based on the aspect ratio that you have I'm gonna set it to no crop but probably the biggest selling point in here is the post process built in inside the camera and each camera gets to have a an individual post process which overwrites your overall post process volume within the scene which is really really cool so I can just go in there and go to for example color grading and go into shadows and scroll all the way down and say you know what I'm gonna go with gamma and I'm gonna sort of reduce that gamma and I'm gonna get slightly darker uh, shadows uh, for my own scene now this will not have an impact on the scene itself you only see that in this camera you can go in there and change all of these attributes you can say all right you know what I'm just going to um, use a different method of lighting for this particular camera so you have that level of control over it uh, you can just say all right for reflections I'm going to use lumen and for this particular um, camera I would like to use a much higher quality of reflection so when you render from this camera you'll be getting a much higher quality for your reflection so it's a really camera based type of attribute that you're dealing with and it's just absolutely amazing you can just increase the global saturation for example here come in here increase the global saturation ever so slightly change the global gamma ever so slightly add grain at offset and add temperature uh, change the white balance per camera all sorts of things that you can do per camera so that gives you as a user great deal of flexibility where you really don't need to hit the nail on the head with your post-processing volume you can always tweak things further per camera Uh, believe it or not it's actually fairly easy to animate uh, your scene I'm gonna go to the very first frame now you position your camera wherever you want I can actually zoom in ever so slightly and I feel like I can do much better with my lens so I'm just gonna go in here and switch to maybe 30 I think that works a lot better for this particular scene and maybe bring back the post process so I think I changed a few things in here namely saturation so I'm just gonna bring that one back that looked a little bit unusual so with that out of the way I have in my level sequence a rollout called transform and guess what that is in charge of translating rotating and scaling any asset on this timeline in this particular case I'm just going to change the position or location of this current camera so I'm just gonna bring everything into the very first frame and I'm gonna go to locate and add a key 
Then I'm going to go move all the way to the last frame of the sequence and just bring the camera closer. Now you can either press enter, but enter is going to sort of keyframe the selected channel, which is transform. This will add a keyframe on location, rotation and scale. Still okay, but I prefer to manually click on the location again and I have a start frame and I have an end frame location. So I have a brand new keyframe. So that's what I'm getting. If I play, you can see the camera moves. Now it's a little bit fast for my taste. So at any point of time, you can select your keyframe. You can delete it, snap it to frame or rekey. I'm just going to delete it. And this time I'm just going to move in, bring this to the center ever so slightly. I don't think I want to move too far and do another keyframe location keyframe. Now I'm going to bring it back and play. And you can see I have a decent pace, but it's speeding up and slowing down. We call that ease in and ease out. If you want to see the transition, you can actually click on this button, which shows the curve editor. I'm going to go in here, select location and you can see X, Y, and Z. We have ease in and ease out. So it goes slowly, speeds up, and slows down. And it happens in X, in Y, and Z. One way of doing this, or fixing this rather, is to select the tangent and just middle mouse, bring this down, or add another keyframe. If you're not sure what you're doing, this may lead into some inconsistencies. A much easier way is to select all of these guys, right click on it and go, I want this to be linear. Now if I go and open the curve editor, location, you can see our X, Y and Z do not have any ease in and ease out anymore. Single click, job done. Let's play that again. So if I play, you can see it works beautifully. There is no ease in and ease out. Fantastic. It's that simple. You do the exact same thing when you rotate the camera. We usually don't scale the camera, but of course, if you have an object and add it to your sequencer, then you can keyframe the scale using the same method. Let's go to the next chapter. Now in this one, I would like to show you how to add the second camera. Because you may say, well, Reza, I know how to create uh, the second camera now. I'm just going to extend this scene right here. So I can just go in here and extend this scene. I'm going to put the uh, cursor right here and I'm going to create a second camera. Now, the first thing that will catch your eyes is what just happened. Because for the first camera, I can actually see the track but the sequencer did not actually add my second camera. Well, first things first, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's just go ahead and fix the second camera. Right now I'm piloting uh, the new camera. Uh, let's actually go in here and rename. I'm going to call that cam two. And the first one, I'm just going to call that cam one. Now, right now, cam two has not been used. And because I just created using this button, cam one and cam two look absolutely identical. So they are positioning exactly in the same location. I so don't want that. So I'm just going to move in and I'm going to pick another spot. Uh, maybe this door right here. I'm going to zoom back. So again, I have a sort of a near ground element. I would like to have a near ground element and sort of frame my composition, something like that. Again, I'm going to go in here and play around with the depth of field a little bit. Cool. Now the door is in focus. I'm happy with the second uh, camera. But again, the problem is still there. 
where is the track? Because I created the first camera, I can see the track, I can see the thumbnail, where is the second one? Well, that's the thing. Every time you create a second camera, you actually need to go into camera and you need to add that. So go to camera and that gives you the second track. Uh, now, here's the thing. If I go and rewind, all we see is the second camera. Where is the first camera? Well, always look at this lock icon. So right now we're locking into camera two. You can lock into camera one, which in that case, you're not going to see camera two instead, or you can lock into the big container, which is our camera cuts. If I do that, now I see both of them. So if I go in here, actually, why don't I select the second camera and do a little bit of an animation. So that's going to be really, really simple. Uh, I'm just going to go into uh, the first frame. I'm going to go into location and add a keyframe. I'm going to go all the way here and just going to pilot and just keyframe it location, keyframe, select both keyframes, set it to linear. Now we're talking. Let's play now using the lock for camera cuts. So I'm just going to rewind. That is my first camera. And then we cut to the second camera. Simple as that. Now, I uh, still need to show you one last trick before I show you how to export this as a video, and that is to use shots in the master sequences. Of course, this is totally viable. You still can continue with that. The problem is if you have more than a couple of shots, then it becomes a little bit of a headache. You can see this is not really sustainable. Um, this timeline, this camera cuts timeline is getting really stretched. And we just talked about nonlinear editing and everyone thinks, okay, so it's like DaVinci and um, Premiere, but it's not looking like uh, a DaVinci or Premiere when you have track. So let's go to the next chapter and see how we can make this workflow even more efficient. All right, um, let's look for a more efficient way of uh, creating or producing shots. The way that I approach this is I consider each level sequence the shot, and then I'll import them into a master level sequence. Hope that makes sense. So um, I'm just going to uh, go into this level sequence now. I'm going to uh, open this up and I'm going to create a camera. Let's say that's the camera I have and I'm just going to uh, transform it. So I'm just going to go uh, and key it and uh, I'm going to adjust the depth of field. And I'm going to go all the way to the end and ever so slightly, I'm going to zoom in and uh, enter or set a key for location. So um, I have other keyframes for rotation and scale. I can get rid of them, selecting these two and have linear. So if I go here, I've got a very simple shot. Cool. So that can be one shot. I can go in there and say, um, you know what? I'm just going to rename you to shot one. Let's produce another shot going to cinematic level sequence. And I'm going to call this guy shot two. double click on it. And I'm going to produce a brand new camera. Now I'm going to reposition that. Uh, I'm going to pick a different spot, obviously, this time. Um, maybe the good old door that we used in the previous chapters. I'm just going to zoom in. 
and uh, and by the way if the gizmos and reflection and uh, blockers and all the light gizmos are on your way uh, you know what to do you can press g to hide them right uh, but for now i really don't mind just so you know that option is available to you i'm gonna do a quick animation in here too So if I go and zoom back and press space, that's the animation I have. And uh, this area is in focus. So I have shot two ready. Let's produce another one. So level sequence, I'm going to call that shot three. I'm going to open it. I'm going to produce a camera. And uh, let's pick another area, maybe a zoom in of one of these guys and this time I'm going to ever so slightly zoom back so I'm gonna go in here zoom in a little bit and playing around with depth of field just a little bit I can sort of zoom back a little bit now I go to here switch all the way into transform and key going to the end and zoom back ever so slightly and location key select both linear let's have a look not too bad and that's my third shot so uh, we have one two three let's put these three into a master camera sequence why not so I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna create a level sequence call this master SEQ for sequence and let's bring them in here now to bring them as shots I go track and produce a shot track and then this shot asks for number of shots and guess what I have shot one shot two and shot three I'll bring shot one there we have it shot one is there I can extend my timeline so uh, I extend my timeline quite a fair bit so I can go all the way in and extend it all the way to 600 now shot one is there let's go to the end of the frame and bring in our second shot now you can see it's kind of similar to what we have in Adobe Premiere so you can actually go in here um, select all of these shots and go from one shot to another shot let's bring our uh, third shot so I'm just gonna go into shots click and obviously I need to be at the end of this guy go into shot and i'm going to bring my shot three which is the close-up one so again i'm going to lock it to shots as you can see and if i zoom back and rewind and play shot one shot two And shot three so um, I personally think this is a much cleaner way of working you can actually bring this guy out and if you have a second monitor you can actually use that um, as your second monitor and have total control over a uh, number of shots and that gives you a, a much cleaner workflow and much easier way of working now with that out of the way let's see how we can export what we have and turn it into a, a video 
Now the aim is to go for quality when we want to render it. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to find my post process volume. Well, if you are actually editing uh, the built in post process volume within these shots, then that's fine. But if you don't overwrite your main post process volume, then it's a good idea to just target the scene post process volume. So I'm going to type in post process and it's inside rendering post process volume. And within that, we are going to uh, change a couple of a uh, couple of attributes. So if I just type in lumen, because finding things can be quite difficult um, with lumen global, we have uh, find or gather quality. I can set this one to four scene details. I can set this one to four lumen scene lighting quality. I can set this one to four. You can see we're sort of cranking up some of these attributes because at this stage, how well the scene functions doesn't really matter because we want to actually bake everything into video. Uh, we also need to look after reflection. So if I go to reflection, enable quality, I can set this one to four. But again, um, these things are going to work uh, in a condition and that condition is we kind of need to have uh, ray tracing on in our scene. To do that, we need to go to the project settings. So I'm going to go to settings and then I go to project settings and under platform, we need to check one thing. Chances are it's correct, but just in case under platform windows, you just need to make sure that your default RHI is set to direct X and that allows you to enable ray tracing. Now, because it's just such a long window and I don't want to freak you out, I'm just going to type in ray tracing and use hardware ray tracing when available under Lumen can be turned on. Perfect. We can now close the window. Sometimes the engine asks you to restart everything which is totally fine. And you can see right away that we see a, a we have a, a much better vibrant result right now. Now let's see how we can render our project. To do that, you can either go to Windows, Cinematic, Movie, Render Queue and bring your Movie Render Queue window or alternatively you can click on this icon and bring your movie render queue. Now it says I'm going to for now only render master sequence, which is exactly what we want. You don't want to um, render only shot one, only shot two, only shot three. You would like to render all three. Now um, we have settings, we have output, now, if you look at here, it says inside your project directory, you have a folder um, named saved and inside that movie renders that is going to render everything for you. So this is the um, main project directory inside that saved and within that it's going to basically render everything in there. Now you may say, okay, so what about file extensions, resolution, so on and so forth. That's where this setting comes to play and it says unsaved configuration, meaning that you haven't changed anything. So if you're happy with the default, then go ahead and render. But usually you kind of don't know what's going on. So you better click on this first and it says, all right, you're about to render JPEG sequence. You may say, well, I don't want JPEG. In that case, you can turn it off, go to settings and say, you know what? I want to get PNG instead. Or you may want to get EXR, which is, well, a high bit depth, uh, much more accurate result you're going to get with this. But I'm happy with PNG. And again, in the output is where you specify the resolution. So 1920 to 1080, which kind of matches the um, with uh, a height ratio and the sensor width and height that I specified for my cameras. And you go in there and you say frames, handle frame count zero, 
and you can use a, a custom playback range. So you have a sort of start frame and end frame if you just want to um, render chunk of your animation. Uh, the output frame rate is 24 per second. You can use a custom frame rate. Um, I live in Australia and it's usually 25 frame per second. So that's what I'm going to go with. So if I go accept, uh, not much is going to change, uh, but basically it's going to apply your changes to all three shots. As you can see, the sequences that it's going to go through is the master sequence and uh, everything is ready to go you specified the output directory and if i bring this guy over here and say render so uh, let's wait for this to be finished well it's already finished um, i can close that if i go in here there is a um, movie renders and if I go in there you can see I've got the sequences all ready to go so if I bring this guy right here you can see that I've got the frame sequence all ready to go so let's put this in um, Adobe Premiere really quick and render this out all right here I am inside Adobe Premiere. All I need to do is just to right click, go to import and bring the whole thing as an image sequence. I have the sequence. I need to create the timeline. So drag and drop it in here to create a sequence. I'm going to uh, press backslash to have that framed. And there we have it. I can play. Now you can see the animation plays and I have all three cameras in there. Camera one, camera two, and camera three. I can select this timeline, press control M and output the result. I'm gonna go with the default 1080 HD. I don't have any audio, so I can turn this off. I can go and save it on my desktop under master sequence and export and here's the result that's pretty much it i mean i hope you found this video useful i hope you guys use these techniques in your own projects and enjoyed this video Again, thank you very much for your support. You can always follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, and other social platforms to keep up with the uh, upcoming video tutorials. Do make suggestions and please leave feedback. I always would like to know how I do. And um, have a great rest of your day. Stay safe. Until the next video, see you guys later.